And the next speaker is Shapurnikova Eugenia, uh, Philosophical Society of Russia, uh, project coordinator of the Foundation for the Promotion of Socially Significant and Educational Activities Theosophy. Ms. Eugenia Mikhailovna Shapurnikova was born in a small Siberian village of Krasnoyarsk territory, but inaugurated from the Siberian Institute of Business Management and Psychology, uh, has uh, awarded a bachelor's degree in economics uh, and uh, worked in this field of culture, municipal administration, uh, coordination of institutions, scientific and methodological work and social design uh, till now. Member of the Theological Society since 2010, Vice President of the Edmund Lodge, coordinator of projects of the OSP Foundation. And uh, my report, The Secret Doctrine as the Practice of the OSP. The uh, idea of how this report emerged is based on many questions, suppositions, and experience of work in the philosophical scientific sphere in the regions of the Russian Federation and uh, on the basis of analytical work of international research seminars. Many participants keep asking why we should ever even study the secret doctrine, why we need these terms, or why we can, how we can apply them because people live well even without them and today in the report i would like to touch upon this topic in more details so the secret doctrine the theosophy in practice in order to practice something uh, we need to know what does theosophy mean by knowledge knowledge is knowledge of the truth the truth is the cause the cause is eternity eternity is a single inner essence so what is finite or transitory cannot be knowledge knowledge is the spiritual accumulation that has been collected over many incarnations and if we once reach the truth of knowledge the knowledge remains with us forever Forever in all incarnations. We will strive for this truth, for read this magnet in every earthly life. Then we will have recognition of what is eternal and what is transitory. We can distinguish between the highest and lowest manifestations of our personality. We can have the necessity attend necessary attention to notice in ourselves smallest beginnings of selfish, uh, self Selfishness, selfishness and egoism, uh, and its selfishness kills at all noble impulses in our nature. Then we can start working on ourselves and get closer to truth or therefore to the knowledge. And then we can start practicing our learning ourselves, learning our higher me, higher ego, or we can become pure. The higher ego is uh, the immortal essence. HPB says that you need to have books and the knowledge embedded in them should be applied in practice. This will develop confidence, uh, persuasiveness and the ability to think. In the secret doctrine, everything begins with description of the absolute truth. The amount of absolute truth we can able to perceive is determined solely by the degree of proximity of our consciousness to this truth. The absolute truth is the symbol of eternity. Convention is already a known lie. Theosophy is divine knowledge and such knowledge is the truth. So by knowing we affirm the truth or the verity and eradicate the lie. The ray of the absolute truth can only be reflected in the pure mirror of its own flame, which is our highest spiritual awareness. Spiritual awareness begins when paradoxes disappear. The main problem in understanding theosophy and therefore in practice is the inability to recognize the inner form and the outer form. To have this recognition, one must have knowledge of the inner nature. Unfortunately, the man lives by the ordinary vision and by the external form of knowledge and therefore perceives everything exactly by external aspects only. The, but those who have been able to discern the life of the inner being, those who have carefully studied the life in themselves before proceeding to the study and analysis uh, of its manifestation in the outer shell, they are the ones who can expect to understand theosophy or practice. At the beginning of the both SHPP describes in the secret doctrine, not only animals and birds symbolize cosmic forces in general, but each separate genus of animals and birds represented one differentiation of one of these cosmic forces. 
During the period of the Earth under review, the open confrontation of two diametrically opposed forces was open, which, have, uh, which was due to the inherent desire for domination uh, of each of them over the other, and it all resulted in Fahad manifesting the energy that carried out their mutual adaptation and final combination, thus raising the level of vibration of the substance at the planes on which these forces operate. That is, the power of Fahad caused matter to become more perfect, and the two forces merged together, the centripetal and centrifugal forces. Uh, Mahatma Moria says the antagonism of the opposite forces is peculiar only to the lower planes, and on the higher planes they interact successfully because they have this synthesis. They, according to the secret doctrine, we can look a little more at other aspects of this movement towards the joining of opposites. So the struggle of two opposing forces is the struggle between the two selves, the higher manners and the lower manners. The incoming breath of of Apana is the fixed mind, the higher manas, the centrifugal force. The outcome and breathe is Udana, Prana, or mobile mind, lower manas, centripetal force. Their connection is the vital wind or the navel. The synthesis point of life, the union of an internal and external breathing is life. So that is how Fahad works. In the Secret Doctrine, HPB writes that Fahad has three, five, and seven promotions according to the Dian stances. It's interesting to know that three, five, and seven uh, promotions of Fahad correspond to third and seventh races of humanity. The third one is Agni Shivatas, who gave the spark illuminated humanity with manners. The fifth race is the symbol of the higher manners when the person should become reasonable. And uh, the seventh race is when the person becomes conscious of thinking, learns to think independently, and then he will create his own image. That is, he will become a creator. Let us see how numbers work. If we combine three, five, and seven, we'll get six. Synthesis of the opposites of the first three opens six directions of space. Within which the open heart shines, as only the heart can contain opposites of internal and external and reveal understanding or light. Only it can connect six to seven and start moving the wheel of time into. This knowledge is given. Uh, in the sacred doctrine that HPB has dedicated to all true theosophists, meaning these directions of space, of for heart, there are generosity, the sunlight, the cause. Second, recognition by the spirit, the plant of Mars, uh, divine dignity, spiritual beginning, then exaltation of virtue, the Jupiter, that is the soul, having joy of uh, the common good, then the, the need to turn the wheel of teachings, Venus, rational, nature, the cup of wisdom of human consciousness. The fifth direction is the prey about Nirvana was not achieved so that the teacher does not leave us Mercury and material body or realization. And the sixth direction is not conceptual works for the benefit of all living beings, moon, wisdom, and deeds of person, a cosmic completeness. The seventh one is the bliss of God, the central point, Saturn, the synthesis, or the number seven. So the six directions of space who go clockwise. But the idea we would like to dwell on today is the idea of the opposite. If we take 
начала или первое. И вообще с
Light does not have any limit. So if we approach the light of inner understanding or the higher ego we have, we become magnets, and then the world changes not only within us, but also outside of us, up to boundlessness, since the light is one, the truth is one, and the cause is one. The main principle of theosophy, one of them, is the law of correspondence, that is, as above, as above so below, the great interconnection of the cosmos, nature, and man. It's in the sacred doctrine that HPB reveals this single cause, so cosmogenic first, and only then anthropogenesis and theogenesis come. It's the same synthesis, the secret doctrine mentions the Pythagorean triangle, which symbolizes the great movement from the single non-form to multiplicity of form. What corresponds to the planes of being or the planes of consciousness connects all the worlds by movement or synthesis. In fact, what is this transition? That is when time shrinks to and uh, there is an instant instantaneous change in the quality uh, of consciousness. In order for this transition to take place, the primordial energy of the beginning of everything is needed, a single eternal principle, periodicity, which is movement. Similarity of all things with the universal soul, the beginning, these are the three parts we need. We need uh, two uh, who are united. Uh, they are three, and three mean united. It's periodicity, and um, it all is possible if the three are conjunct. Uh, the three principles are combined into one, and then we can have three falling into four. The triad will be revealed anyway and will open the secret of movement, no matter what it is. Uh, to understand this movement, uh, we use geometry. The Pythagorean uh, corresponds to the three logoi, uh, the first, the second, and the third logos. Uh, the three logos are combined and whole fourth state. It's sevenfold state. In key moments of the sacred doctrine, we can also see numbers of this moment of sevenfold nature. The sum of all Nidanas is based on fourth truth. What does it mean, the sum of Nidanas? Twelve Nidanas, the sum is three, the fourth uh, truth is, is four, and the sum is seven. Why does HPB give this into in numbers? She doesn't tell anything, she just gave it as a person appears. One, uh, 113 multiplied by 5 is uh, 565. Let us see how we can uh, put uh, inner understanding of number or life here. What does it mean 11? It's 2. 2 who are equal. 2. What does it mean 3? Uh, the 2 give birth to the third. And five means they give birth to uh, to human being, who is the symbol of five. And uh, what is human being? He is sevenfold. So uh, two, three, five, and seven. Further, it should be mentions that what does it mean? Uh, five, sixty-five. Well, uh, what does it mean? Five. Uh, it's uh, 56.5 multiplied by 10. 56.5 uh, means the principles in a person in movement. In movement of cross, they uh, create... Birth. This cross is spiritual and birth is um, the ray. So 10 means ray movement and internal state of ray is sevenfold. That is how multi-level universe is created. Many projections therefore can create a world of solid forms and in order not to lose it, but to apply it practically, to apply the number that is within it, the number can be it can become wider or can shrink, and in this uh, number becoming wider, there is the sense of projection to think of the real form and then to get back to the initial state, practical knowledge about its own creation. So it turns out to, that the, the matter uh, being an abstract notion and substance of uh, over-subtle um, notion 
in new space uh, gets formed not only as a solid substance uh, in building worlds, but also becoming the form of these worlds. Uh, the matter is living, it breathes, uh, just uh, breathing and in Pralaya we are breathe out the universe leaves and in Manavantara we are and uh, the matter is waiting for internal bliss. So uh, there is form and non-form um, internal and outer and if it gets together there is the force of manifestation born. As soon as uh, the three merge into the single state, the sterility state is ready to manifest. So the three nature uh, cannot be avoided as well as truth because it's fundamental and in this concept I would like to touch upon in the jubilee year of HPB was founded the Theosophical Society this idea of uh, the um, world brotherhood in this threefold what is theosophy what, who is theosophist and what is Theosophical Society according to the three fundamental notions of the secret doctrine uh, so uh, there is inner wisdom or theosophy. This is the inner form. There is theosophist. It's a subtle form that connects the inner essence of theosophy and manifestation of the body of consciousness and the theosophical society in external form. Uh, if these are three concepts which exist, then there are three qualities of consciousness, minds that strive for the inner form, the primordial wisdom and the spark of the spirit that animates the consciousness and the man refining and purifying his consciousness reveals himself more to this light. To do that, it's necessary to know that there is a primordial energy, the single immutable essence and the inner spiritual essence that exists in any manifested form, only we do not see it because they are too dense in the state of consciousness, in dense energies that cannot be penetrated or we cannot penetrate and connect all forms. This knowledge is given in the sacred doctrine, more specifically in the first three stanzas. The second state is of consciousness is duality, sensory world, the world of evolution, whether it's mine or not mine, whether it's pleasant or not. And the third uh, form is the most solid one, the outer uh, manifestation, the Theosophical Society. If we are only in that, then we will perceive all processes only through outer form of manifestation without the inner essence and will not be able to choose this shape, to change this shape. The shape can be changed only from within. We know all the we can know all the history of the theosophical movement, but without knowing theosophy, will not be able to change the shape for the better. And finally, it will be as dense that it will be destructed because no in essence will be in that. Now, the human being, theosophist, can uh, combine uh, this inner and outer theosophy, theosophy and theosophical society, combine them in. Well. He'll be able to do it when he loses fear because people are trying to uh, keep themselves from the new uh, test uh, for millennials and it goes to uh, the new uh, test of what he has because the war you know, warriors who were cutting their fingers to avoid the battle. And the idea of theosophists, so the Theosophical Society, is in order not to cut our fingers off, but to fight with our lower nature by changing ourselves. That is when the third state or the mind is established that is uh, that should be manifested in the outer form. And all contradictions happen because people live in the outer form that is not perfect in its nature and can never be perfect because it's infinite and illusionary because estimate and judgments are always there and this duality of perception doesn't give us any peace because we assess every situation only through the outer form but as soon as our mind is as pure that we are allowed to see the initial inner essence which is light of, of monad the high ego or the teacher inside us we can combine the inner essence of theosophy and the outer shape or the philosophical society and give 
life to it. As soon as we live through this light, all opposites and contradictions disappear because this synthesis gives birth to creativity. It's how the heart works. And then the Philosophical Society will be united to organism, the great form and shape for manifesting the initial wisdom of theosophy. And then we will have joy because of any revealed uh, creative thought we will create and uh, uh, widen our own uh, thought image because its initial divine wisdom will be in us as the sun uh, then uh, it will be purity the divine uh, mirror om that will shine through us as through the glass uh, by initiating our initial beauty and wisdom uh, it's said uh, that we should cut off the past concentrate on the present and the time will uh, uh, be suppressed and then we will live every day we should be new ready to accept the new and then we'll be able to live now in the moment uh, because our inner essence will be allowed to shine and it shines only in the present right now and only when we are immortal we are in the state of mon my mirroring of the divine mind and it is possible in theosophy as we manifest the three fundamental propositions of the secret doctrine the three aspects of the absolute if we don't know the single cause we will not be able to understand theosophy or practice it if we know the cause then through this prism we can know any sphere of human existence and will be unusual in this form will be unusual new magnetic direction not only on consciousness of a, or of a person but the higher nature, but also other consciousness, uh, because we are in the same space of thought, then we'll avoid the main mistakes. First, we'll start first, not society. Second, we'll understand that changing of external form will not lead to anything. It's impossible to change the internal form by changing the external form. Then, only by changing the internal form, we can change the external form. So it's in the secret doctrine said that the movement begins from the inside out. Then we can learn concentration, attention, and mainly connection of the inner and the outer, which is like true life. It means that three, uh, seven, one, two, three, threefold fall into four. We have seven, seven and ten. Ten is form of ray movement. Seven is inner state. How the heart acts, uh, joining uh, two opposite centripetal and uh, centrifugal forms, because for heart is the law of harmony uh, and uh, the law of joining the opposites, where paradoxes disappear. Theosophists must know these laws and act according to them. Then the theosophical knowledge will not be an abstraction of fantasy, because the new cycle has already begun, the new epoch and the time has come when theosophical knowledge becomes a vital necessity for every person. And if we act according to these laws ourselves, then we will become that magnet or that light. Uh, and then we will not need to call anyone strenuously persuade, discuss, or argue, then people will see for themselves and will knock on our door and come to us on their own. Our task is just to open the door. <laughs>